Hey Pfingsters, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Pfingster.com and in today's video I'm going to show you the Python exec function or with the subtitle a hacker's guide to a dangerous function. So let's dive right into it. What is the exec function? So the exec function, um, also like you could call it method, um, actually no it's a function, executes the Python code you pass as a string or an executable object argument and this is called dynamic execution because you can create this string at runtime. So it's di you can dynamically create a string to be executed and pass it into the exec function and this will then uh, result in, so this will then cause the Python program to execute the string that you have passed as an argument. So for example, here you have the exec function, it's built in, you don't need to import anything to access this uh, function and it runs a Python code you pass as an argument, so as a string argument and this is called dynamic execution. So, you ha so here's an example, you have a program Maybe let's just have an example in the, in, in, in the code share. So here we have an interactive uh, Python code share and now we create our program. Our program can be any string. Uh, so like say we print hello world. It's always the hello world program and now we can call exec program. Okay, while this this sounds this sounds really simple and it doesn't sound too fancy, it's actually uh, it's a it's a huge and very dangerous function. Why? Because because if you allow a user to run such an exec program, it will run on your computer. So, for example, if you provide a server environment and you let the user ex run some Python code on your server, then he can actually not only like create variables and print stuff to the shell or so, because he, he can also run all kinds of um, uh, commands on your on your machine, not on his machine. So if he, if the so it's not like he he doesn't execute uh, code client side. It's execute server side if you host it on your server. So if you let a user, so if you are a server administrator, for example, and you allow the user to run some Python code, they can actually use the exec function to do some uh, real dirty stuff here. <laughs> and and like um, one example would be the following: you can you can do. Um, you can create a program and this program just is maybe yeah actually it's it's even it's even worse because if if um if the if the for example suppose you have an input function like um you in, in your program you have something like this so you have um, x input something and please input your code something like something like this yeah and um, please input your code and now you can take this and execute it right so this way you could allow any user theoretically to run some code on your computer yeah so first you take the code from the user that he gives you as an input and then you you run this code so let's let's run this the shell say you have a shell and now 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 and now actually you have opened up all kind of vulner vulnerability issues because now the user can can add can write some some really harmful code like um, i have an example here mm. Yeah, so it can, can, why is it dangerous? Okay, here we have it. So, for example, it can, the user can run this command. And now I have to be careful not to run it on my machine as well. <laughs> so, so it can, it can run the following. So, say we paste this. We type import OS and OS system. Okay, now you see. So first we import the module OS and now we call your OS system and now we pass um, a certain systems command into the into the OS system function and this executes it on the command line the code rm minus rf asterisk and this basically removes all the files and the folders uh, in a recursive manner. So this could 
wipe out your computer in one single line of code. And if you allow the user to, to run, to, to uh, so if you have some user input, you allow the user to do this. And you, you could even do this remotely. Like if, if, if your machine runs this code on the server and you allow some interactive input, then the user can just destroy everything on your computer. So you need to be careful with the exec function. But of course, it also can, can have a lot of uh, useful stuff. So we can input some code here, like print hi. Okay, and then it doesn't anything because we still we still need to print it. Uh, okay, input exec x, please input your code. Now it's a string and now it executes a string. Okay, why wouldn't this work? Print hi. Yeah, okay, now it works. So uh, without without the um, quotes, of course. So I, this is just my input. My input is, is already converted to a string. And now what I did here is to convert it to a string with quotes as characters. And of course, this doesn't work. Okay, so we provide, uh, it provides input to the coder. You can provide any, any code input and then it just prints it out. So the exec function does it for you. It takes a string, it, it uh, interprets or um, considers this string as a, as a Python program and runs it. And th this is very useful because you can also have some multi-line um, programs like, like this one. So say you have a variable x ls, you have a program and now you can define, so this is the, all of this is a, it's a multi-line string, okay? You can define your program within a string and then simply you pass the program as a string and um, yeah, and, and, and run this. So if you run this, you get an error and this is like expected because um, the variable x is not defined here. You have uh, a, a, a local namespace I will explain this in a moment. If you remove the namespace, then it uh, executes the code. So you, so we execute the the the, the string command, and the string is uh, run as a program. And now you have two additional arguments here for the exec function. The first argument is the globals argument. The second one is the locals argument. And you need to replace them, obviously. And um, and both of them expect a dictionary. So per default, you can pass an empty dictionary into this. And this is just the globals and locals uh, variables. They are dictionaries and they define the environment, the names that are stored in your environment. So for example, if you create this program, if you run this program, in our environment, we have a name X in our global namespace and also in the local namespace. But uh, we don't have this... So if you, if you run this exec program, then this program is like in a new shell, it's executed in, in, a, in a new shell. So if you, if you pass an empty, so it just takes our environment. So if you don't pass any local or global variable, it just takes our namespace. So the exec program itself within the program, we can access variables such as X that are defined outside of the program because they are already stored in the, um, in the global namespace. And also in the local namespace because it's just copied into the into so the global namespace just copied into the local namespace. But if you if you pass so this this works if we have we have seen this if you run the code you get the output Alice. So within our exec program we can access variables that are defined outside. But if we if we don't want the the, the, the user to actually see the variables that are defined within. Um, uh, so, for example, we want to, to, the user to allow running any, any program, um, but we don't want to allow him to see the variables in our namespace. We can pass these empty namespaces and now the user will, won't see the variables defined in the outer namespace and it throws the error if he tries to do this. Okay, So it's, now it cannot access um, this variable x. So it needs to define the variable x within, the na within its own namespace and now this would uh, run again. So I have to refresh this. Um, x is Alice. Yeah, now we can simplify this print x. Good, and now this should work. Good, you see, result is Alice. Good, so this is this is how the exec function works. Um, the exec function also has a nice feature because it um, it can, so you can also import libraries in the exec function. For example, uh, this code snippet. Yeah. We, we set our program, it's a multi-line string again, and we first import the random library, and then we print a random number to the shell. Okay, so we can define our program in our string, uh, very simple. And also, 
and and then and run then run the program. If we do this, we get a random number between zero and nine. So we so we use other people's modules within the exec function. Now you already see the power of the exec function because you can access whole projects, you can access thousands, tens, tens of thousands of lines of code and run them with, within a single line of code. And this is like a very powerful function. I would say it's one of the most powerful Python functions there is. And um, often, so I use the exec function sometimes because you know I have written a book Python one-liners and so I always try to one-linerize things and if I'm really uncreative, I don't know how to one-linerize a certain program, it can be done very simply. So the exec function can basically one-linerize any program. You can just pass a string like this. So say you have, let's copy this one. So we have uh, this program with uh, four lines of code, even with some indentation blocks like the if statement. So we have a variable a, we have an input, and we have we check whether the input is larger than a, and if so, we print yes. And now we can execute this program; it also works. But we can also one-linerize this project by just replacing all the new lines in this multi-line string with a new line character. So actually, with this new line character, and removing the white space. And this way, we can basically get rid of all the mul all multi-line strings and we can create a uh, like one liner out of it. So now let's make it a one liner string. And now we have the program in a single line of code and now everything that is left is to wrap it into an exec function. And now you see we have compressed this whole code snippet in, a, in into a single line and we can run it as well. And now there's a mistake with what mistake? Ah, okay, so I have this. I need to use new line character. So let's run this and you see your number, say number is 42 and 42 is larger than two. So the result is yes. So this works as well. And um, then one last one last thing that may be interest, interesting to you, this one is to how, how we can actually use the exec function to run any 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 python files content so we can we can call exec then we open the file we read all the lines and put them into the exec function and and just run them so this way you can really execute i mean even even some malicious scripts in on your computer or so you could uh, execute with this very short and concise one line it doesn't look harmful this code doesn't look harmful so therefore you should always be very um uh, should always be very careful not to run some code, even if it looks harm harmless, um, run some code that you obtained from the internet. Because if you just used, say you just copy pasted some code like this, you think, oh, it's a single line of code, how much harm can it <laughs> create? Actually, if, it, if, you, if someone would pack this one, so for example, they would use the URL package and just download a certain malicious code, code file like a Trojan, Trojan horse or so, they would just download it in a single line of code and run it. And then it's on your computer, then it runs on your computer already. So even, even a very short, concise single line of code can be very malicious uh, by, with this exec function. So if you see the exec function, all the red flags should, should, should be uh, in alert mode. So you should very, be very careful of using it. Okay, so if you, but if you are interested in writing very concise, very efficient and uh, to the point Python code, then check out my book, Python One-Liners. Um, it appeared in 2020, this, this year, it's, so it's a, it's a fresh book. And um, we spend hundreds, even thousands, thousands of man hours improving the book and writing the content and polishing it. So it's really good quality, I think. Um, you know, and also the reviews are pretty good. So we have like 4.8 stars on average. Um, so I think it's one of the be best rated Python books uh, on the planet, actually, yeah? uh, from the books that have more than, say, 20 ratings. I mean, there are some books that only have one rating and one five star review, so they have an average rating of five. But if you take books that have more that, than 30 ratings, actually, uh, Python One Liners is among the top books, top rated books, uh, Python books on the planet. Okay, check out Python One Liners. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye.